Okay. Our next presenter is Matt Adams. He is a solution engineer at Esri, specializing in local government. He is located in St. Augustine, Florida, and connects with users across Florida and the Southeast. Prior to Esri, he worked in local government in various GIS roles with a strong focus on drones, automation, and mobile workflows. He holds a Master of Science in Geographic Information Systems Technology from the University of Arizona and a Bachelor's in Meteorology with minors in GIS and Emergency Management from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. So, Matt, go ahead. Thanks for the introduction. So today what we're going to be covering is migrating from Web App Builder to Experience Builder. We're going to kind of cover why Web App Builder is retiring, what that's going to look like in the future, how the functionality and parity between those two uh, builders is working, then dive into what Experience Builder is and kind of get into some examples. There's going to be a lot of information to cover in this short period of time. So we're going to if I get going too fast, just let me know, but I'm going to try to cover everything that I've got here in the slides. So first off, why is Web App Builder retiring? You know, we've all seen that announcement that came out earlier this year that Web App Builder will be retiring next July. Well, the reason really coincides with that it is coinciding with that retirement of the ArcGIS API for JavaScript 3.x. So this is what Web App Builder was built off of in the original map map viewer in ArcGIS Online. And that came out about 15 years ago. So it's been some time and as tech is always changing and evolving, we really needed to advance with our technology and get with that more frequent, more updated times. So the 4X API for JavaScript came out in 2016 and that's gonna be what our new maps SDK for JavaScript runs off of the new map viewer and also experience builder. So, Web App Builder came out back in 2014, and it's been useful. We've seen a ton of great applications that have been built off of Web App Builder. But again, that's almost 10 years ago, and technology is moving so fast. So we wanted to give you guys a more modernized app builder. Think back to when the original iPhone and what that original iPhone did compared to what they're capable of now. So we, the Experience Builder is kind of that new evolution of app builders that's going to be built on that JavaScript 4x API. With that, it's going to be sleeker, it's going to be faster, and it's also more responsive on mobile devices, which we're finding many of our users are using as a primary source of looking at web apps nowadays. There's also fewer delays in getting into the data and interacting it, and it's overall just a much more efficient way to share data and our applications with others. So we'll slowly move away from Web App Builder into this new App Builder territory. There's a lot of additional functionality that's going to come with Experience Builder being built on that newer technology. So that also means newer opportunities and better ways that you can interact with your data. And we'll dive a bit deeper into that later in this presentation. So that July 2024 date that we've all seen is the official date of retirement for the Web App Builder Developer Edition, which in, coincides, like I mentioned, with the retirement of the JavaScript 3.x API. So that's the big thing that's going to happen in 2024. And it'll mean that you cannot create any new applications in the Developer Edition beyond that date. Your existing apps will continue to work at that time. And the full-fledged retirement of Web App Builder will start in ArcGIS Enterprise in the first half of 2025, and then will also occur in ArcGIS Online in Q4 of 2025. So there's still some additional time beyond that July 2024 date for you to work on migrating your applications, but that'll be when this starts and it's kind of that big catalyst for moving away from our traditional app builder. So when you're working on migrating from Web App Builder to Experience Builder, Experience Builder might not be the exact answer that you're looking for. You know, there's so many other options now like instant apps, dashboards, story maps. Dashboards are also mobile friendly now. So if that was a reason that you were originally planning to migrate to Experience Builder, but you wanted that dashboard feel on a mobile device, you can just use dashboards to build that. 
And we'll talk a little bit through kind of where the parity is between the different app builders and where things might have moved to. So definitely just take this as that opportunity to think of how your apps are being used now and start to think about the best way for those to still maintain their functionality and get their use throughout your community. So we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into those dates for retirement here. So that QR code on the screen will take you to the roadmap for retirement article that Jim Shaw, the product manager for Experience Builder put together. And I definitely take, I encourage you to take a look at that. Even if you already have, it's a good one to read over again. There's really a lot of great resources in there, but to sum up some of those specific dates, after July, 2024, you'll no longer be able to create new apps with the developer edition, but your existing ones will still function and won't go away. You still have until Q4 of 2025 before Web App Builder is officially retired. So during that time between 2024 and the official retirement there may be some updates to browsers that are interacting with your application that might introduce new security or functionality issues that won't be addressed by Esri. So that might affect how the app is displayed or how it can be used. And that might not be addressed by Esri as a whole. So for enterprise, the biggest difference is that Web App Builder will continue to receive some of those critical bug fixes, especially if there's any security issues. So those will still be addressed so that your enterprise still remains secure, but Web App Builder will not be getting any new functionality in ArcGIS Enterprise. The developer edition there, it, it's getting no bug fixes or enhancements. Basically after that July, 2024 date, you should work on moving off of it as soon as possible. Those apps will still work, uh, but they might not maintain their functionality as those browsers are updated. So the big ones that July 2024 date, but extended support for ArcGIS Online to an extent with, again, some of those issues with updates to browsers and enterprise will still get some of those critical bug fixes. So now we know a bit of why Web App Builder is retiring. So how do you actually move off of Web App Builder, or where do we really want to transition our application to? So Experience Builder will have most of the functionality that you're used to having within Web App Builder, since it's basically just the new evolution of our App Builder. You'll find a lot of those same widgets that you had in Web App Builder, in Experience Builder, and a, a lot of those are like 3D is now directly integrated. So instead of having to use a specific widget, um, and there's also a lot new functions like map interactions and charts that are just baked into Experience Builder. And also some of those new widgets, again, that are slowly bringing that app parity is like the Near Me widget is now fully functional in Experience Builder. So in Web App Builder, we had the, the Near Me, the screening info, the summary, the situational awareness, incident analysis widgets which all of these had those thorough processes in place for their specific functions. All of, those func all of that functionality has been wrapped up into the Near Me widget. And there's a few blog posts available on how to achieve the specific functionality of those widgets like situational awareness within Experience Builder. The functionality was something that a lot of people were using in Web App Builder that kind of went beyond the general application of finding those resources or things. Those can be done in instant apps. We, we really want you to kind of move away from building these big bucket applications that have multiple functions to building more of those target focused applications. Things that you were doing in, again, in Web App Builder that are either simple or focus driven, they're just part of the foundational ArcGIS system now. So if you're using the map viewer in ArcGIS online, you can do things like clustering on feature layers, updating a lot of how you can interact with the map itself within the map viewer, rather than having to create an application in Web App Builder to conduct or make those changes. So that's something to think about as well as you're migrating these apps is, is an application really necessary or can it be done right within the map viewer? 
Another great place to look as you're migrating is going to be the ArcGIS instant apps and ArcGIS solutions. So these are going to be where you would want to go for those specific widgets and functionality, like the public notification widget and district lookup widget. Both of these now reside within their own instant app templates because we found that a lot of customers were using just those widgets on their own for their specific purpose, rather than being an additional tool that's baked into a broader web application. In the instant app, they're, they're a little bit easier to deploy and provide again, that focus driven experience within the application. Then we also have our solutions templates, which I hope all of you are used to looking at and, and kind of checking out as you're building out these workflows. The biggest one with this is that the data aggregation widget is now part of the data aggregation solution that you can deploy as an add-in within ArcGIS Pro currently. And we plan to include that in ArcGIS Online in the future as well. So again, look beyond just Experience Builder as you're transitioning away from Web App Builder because some of these other applications might be a better fit for your organization as you're going to move things away from that Web App Builder template. So a couple of things to note here are that you can still create those custom widgets that would go directly into uh, web into your ArcGIS enterprise. Those web app builders, again, the widgets are going to go away with the retirement, but the developer edition of Experience Builder is now available. So you can still deploy those custom widgets that are built off of that JavaScript 4x API, unlike the Web App Builder one that was off of the 3X API. And one other thing to keep in mind is that by the end of this year, most of the functions of Web App Builder will be reached in one way or another, either through Experience Builder or through Instant Apps. So again, providing a little bit more time before that July retirement to ensure that you have enough resources and all of the tools are gonna be available to make that migration. So let's talk about kind of where Experience Builder wrapped up at the end of 2023. And then we will kind of go into where Experience Builder and Web App Builder will coincide. So you can see things that we've accomplished already in 2023. The star next to the app URL parameters, that's unfortunately been moved over to the 2024 roadmap, um, but it is coming in the near future. So the business analyst widget is officially out of beta. So you can allow your users to select or set a geographic boundary and run infographics directly within an experience. If you're using the utility network, there's now a utility network trace widget. And there's also the 3D slice widgets avail available. The near me widget is officially out of beta. And so it'll help you generate and create those exportable lists of facilities within a buffer of an input location. The base map gallery and the swipe map widget have been added. You may remember these from traditional web maps and, and story maps, and they've been brought into Experience Builder to incorporate that style into the newer, more responsive technology. Experience Builder also now supports related table editing. So we've added that ability to re edit those related tables, which has been something that a lot of customers have been asking for. And then on the accessibility front, we've allowed you, a lot of the experience, you can add those alternative texts and things to make your experiences more accessible. The built-in color themes are gonna meet the color contrast ratio requirements by default. And a lot of the ArcGIS apps have enhanced accessibility. So on that QR code, you can check out a little bit more on the accessibility side. And if accessibility really is the forefront of some of the apps that you're building, you're really going to want to lean towards developing them in ArcGIS Online because they will get those accessibility updates with every ArcGIS Online update that comes out. So there are some URL parameters that are available now. Um, but we're going to get more into those traditional app URL parameters where you can call a specific feature coming out in hopefully Q1 of 2024.
So again, that QR code is going to bring you to that accessibility um, link again. But here's some of the other things that we've got on the roadmap. So the analysis widget was just released with the latest update in 2023, as well as the related table editing and extent navigate. Q1 of 2024, the plan is to have the group filter, a select widget, and then expanding on the URL parameters that are available. And then in Q2, they're hoping to release image measurement, reporting, batch attribute editing, and really bring that mobile first design into play so that you, if you know all of your users are going to be accessing through a mobile device, it would push that into the forefront of your app. Um, with this 2024 20, roadmap, it is just the tentative roadmap. So things might change. They might get pushed to a, a further release, but this is what the team is hoping for right now. So again, where this is where you can really see where the functionality of Web App Builder is versus Experience Builder. We've been showing this matrix a lot for those specific widgets or functionalities and how it would translate over to Experience Builder. So sometimes there's not going to be that direct transfer, like the same widget name and the same functionality. Other times, Experience Builder could have a different name for the widget that was in Web App Builder. And that one widget in Experience Builder could handle several of the widgets that were found in Web App Builder. So this table is, um, is a great one that you can look at. It was posted in a community post by the product manager with another work, a documentation piece as well that can show where each application moved to from, from Web App Builder to Experience Builder. This one's looking a little bit more at just the functionality as a whole. So Anything here that's shown with that fully complete orange circle, it's already there in Experience Builder. Those half circle ones is planned to come in. And this is an older slide. So some of these have been added already. So the Near Me widget is now fully available. Um, some of the analysis tools and geoprocessing are fully available. Um, and then those hollowed out ones, they're not planned to be directly integrated to Experience Builder at this time, but that doesn't mean that the functionality is not there in ArcGIS Online as a whole. And a good example of that would be the, the data aggregation solution. The public notification instant app is another one of those ones that's not filled in, but that is going to go to an instant app template. And just remember, just because you see that something's not planned doesn't mean that it's not possible. So these are that direct one-to-one -one comparison of the exact web app builder functionality. And the rest of that documentation will go into a little bit more detail. So now that we like really understand a little bit more of why we're making that jump from web app builder to experience builder, Let's talk about Experience Builder and what it is as a whole, because it's really exciting in my opinion, and it's much more configurable uh, for you to build those applications for your users. So at its core, Experience Builder is that modern app builder that's going to allow you to create those fully custom customized web experiences. So you can build websites, pages, and even just single page applications that are gonna be data driven within the system. It's not only gonna come from your authoritative data, but you can bring in data from any data source within ArcGIS Online. And you can enable those simple to complex interactions with your maps within your application and the other elements. So those interactions can make your apps pretty powerful. It's not just one simple filter on a map, it can be that the filter within the table will also filter out other widgets and have other things happen within the application. The interface itself is also much more responsive, again, based off of it being built by that JavaScript 4X API. It's gonna respond a lot quicker than the previous technology, and it'll also scale a lot better. Some of the key features of Experience Builder 
are below. I think the mobile optimization is a big one. I know this has been a big reason that people have already moved to Experience Builder and we're only going to make it better. So many people now with, with smartphones being as advanced as they are, they'll just look at those apps right on their phone and you can really tailor the experience to that. Within the Experience Builder designer, you can really also demonstrate and see how it would look on those different devices. So how it would look on a tablet versus a mobile device versus a web browser on a computer. And you can adjust and customize that look for each individual view. So all your widgets might not fit in the mobile view compared to the actual web designer view. So this really helps you kind of consolidate those apps. I know in the past, I've had to create a dashboard specifically for the web browser and then another one specifically for the mobile device. This really allows you to just create one application and configure all the settings within it. Flexibility is another thing that we started to touch on and it's fully customizable and able to scale. So you've got a lot more control of your end result and you can rearrange the application much more freely than you could within Web App Builder. You can adjust the fonts and colors to make it really look like your branding. And then a lot of our customers have their applications embedded on their government sites or, or whatever site it may be. And you really have a lot more control to make sure that design is gonna match what your design looks like currently. A big thing, especially with 3D and, and digital twins and everything becoming so much more popular, you can display 3D data and 2D data directly in the same app without needing to link to a separate 3D map from your 2D application. It really makes it seamless. It's that one seamless web app for both 2D and 3D. We've got some demos out there that, that show how you can take sign management and show it in 2D, but then also flip over to 3D and view those signs and how they would look next to a building or next to a tree. It was really created with 3D in mind, so it's not gonna be that afterthought that it seemed like it was within Web App Builder. Also within Experience Builder, you've got that widget interconnection. So rather than having kind of single widgets that were doing their own job, you can have them relate to each other and react with each other's actions. We'll take a look at some of that when I get to examples, but it's, it's really powerful in that way that you can have those widgets talk to each other. And along with that, Experience Builder still will integrate with other ArcGIS apps. So you can embed a survey within Experience Builder. You can embed a dashboard within Experience Builder. You can put an Experience Builder site on a hub site or within a story map. It's part of the system, so you can kind of place it wherever it needs to be and also bring in whatever other Esri technology you need in order to make that experience have all of the functionality that you're looking for. One last thing here is extensibility, which I just have been calling it the scalability. So it can be as simple or detailed as you need it to be designed to that specific focus or project. You've got more of a full sandbox approach where you can start with a blank screen and drag every single element in it just gives you that freedom to design exactly what you need without having to actually code it on the back end. So to highlight, there's four main pillars and components of an experience. You're gonna have that template, your widgets, your data sources, and your theme. So before we take a look at some live stuff, I've, I've just got one last slide here showing all the ways that we've already seen people using Experience Builder. And I think it really highlights the flexibility and the ways that Experience Builder can be a more enhanced version of those Web App Builder applications. So you've got full websites with different pages versus just a standalone application. It's mobile scaling, so you can have those mobile views of your dashboards like you see in the upper right corner. You can have a bunch of dip different applications embedded within one. And you can also again have that standard looking application with the same templates that you were using within Web App Builder itself. So let me exit out of here and we will 
take a look at some live examples. Are you guys seeing the live experience builder screen here? So this one here is a, a perfect example of how you can build out a full website and full web page. So this one, you've got those web maps, you've got your charts embedded, you've got a little bit of everything here. And if you go and you select at the top, it'll take you to different pages and different sections. So say we wanna look at the, the country profile for Indonesia, we can select that here it spins up the full dashboard that's embedded directly within the experience. And we can always go back and go select another country or go to a different part of the application. It really makes that one seamless web experience rather than having to link to a separate app that's going to open up in a separate tab. This one here for the Ohio State Emergency Operations Center is another example of how you can embed multiple tools directly within the experience builder itself. So if you selected one of them, now you come to this page where you've got your live radar, you've got your weather alerts, you've got your National Weather Service link. So this is going directly to National Weather Service data that you're pulling into the experience. And it makes it again, that one seamless application where the user can always go back to the home page and start exploring it all over again. This experience builder here takes on that more traditional web app builder template that most people are used to, where you'll have your widgets at the bottom where you can select different tools and interact with the map that way. So you don't necessarily have to jump to these brand new, more custom designed applications you can build them directly to that template that your users would already be familiar with. Here's another example. This is how we're gonna be able to use business analysts. So if we look at say Polk County, you can build in that experience, the business analyst template directly in there. So we can run this infographic and not have to have your users go into business analyst itself to get that infographic, they can do it all within the experience builder site itself. This experience builder gallery is a great place to start if you need to get ideas. And once I'm done here, I will drop it in the chat so that you have um, access to it after this is done. And also this experience builder resources page. So there's gonna be tutorials on here the blog posts, the what's new page, it really can be that starting point for how to get going with Experience Builder. Uh, we also recently released a, an instructor-led course on Experience Builder. It's not going to necessarily take Web App Builder to Experience Builder, but it's going to be a great opportunity to fully immerse yourself in how to work with these Experience Builder apps if you need that more instructor-led type training. Um, I do believe that that one is one of our most popular training courses right now. And I believe last I heard it was booked out through about February or March. So with that, I will open up the floor for questions. And I will also drop my email in the chat so that anyone can shoot me an email with questions that I can't get to before our next presentation starts. Anybody have any questions for Matt and help? I know there's some online. Okay, let me start to, to try to look through some of these questions here. Okay, right here. Yeah. Okay, so will the business analyst widget use credits? Yes, that'll consume credits just like running an infographic would. Um, you do not necessarily have to have the business analyst license assigned to you in order to run those. So it just 
can help be an avenue to run those infographics without having to have the business analyst license itself. Okay, uh, next question is, are there any plans to add a track my location widget to experience builder? I am not aware of that, but what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll write down all of these questions that I'm not sure of, and I'll send them over to our product team and see if I can get some additional information. And again, I, I put my email in there as well so that you can reach out with your individual questions so that I can get that response back to you. Okay. Next question is, will the utility network trace use credits? I am not positive on that one. It, um, yeah, I'm not sure on that one. And he's also asking if you can share the link to the community blog or post. Yes, I will track all of those down. Okay, next question is, the draw widget is there, but there is no text option. Is that going to be added? Uh, that would be potentially. Um, I'm not positive on that one as well. And um, then... Yeah, and this would be for dynamic text. Yeah, I'm not sure about if the end user would be able to do that or if that's going to be something that you would do where it would be like a point, like like someone mentioned, where it would be a point layer with a label. But it, it should be something within the um, functionality, I would think, of the sketch widget, but I'm not positive on that. Let me look and see if there's other questions. Is it? Okay. All right. Well, if anybody else has any further questions, um, anybody in the room, actually? No? All right. Well, he's online, so feel free to reach out to him. And he did put his the links in his email in there as well. So, All right. Thank you, Matt. Yep, thank you for having me.